Got him. G'day guys, welcome to the second ever Rohan solo series. This time I'm at Shark Bay, Francois Perrin National Park. I'm on my own, I've got the D-Max, I've got the Dory. I'm heading up to Herald Bight for three nights and then I'm gonna skip over to Bottle Bay for three nights as well. I've got my favorite beer with me. I've got all sorts happening. There's gonna be heaps in store for this one, but I don't wanna to say too much right now because I'm in a super rush to make up for lost time because I slept in this morning, I left late and I don't want to be getting here in pitch black like I did last time. So I've hit the red dirt, I've just paid my fees for the national park entry, don't have the dogs with me. I'm going to drive on through, air down the tyres, and then we'll get started with this whole series. There's going to be about five or six episodes to follow. I cannot wait to get into it. There's so much to spill to you guys. Fishing, camping, the whole works. It's my birthday tomorrow as well, so we're going to do something for that. I'll surprise you there. Pretty much without saying much else, I'm going to leave it there for now, and we'll get on through, and we'll get started on this. So thanks for watching. Hang around. It's going to be a good one. Let's get these tyres uh -huh. down. All I'm really hoping for is that none of my fishing rods or anything have bounced out of the boat as I'm going through here. There's no way that this is going to do it justice. So as you can see, you're going through this bull dust here, fanging around corners, spot is on. And then I'll give you a look at the boat behind us, hopefully. So the boat's in tow. And man, I seriously love coming through here. Sometimes you know how you have to revisit a place to see if you really loved it as much as the first time you were there and then there was never any doubt with this place. Like I remember the first time I come here, I'm back here now, it's like deja vu. And yeah, I'm gonna have the best week ever. We've lost all light just about banging through here. Every time you hit one of these, boy, these bumps in the, in the track, you just feel like you're gonna lose it. Drive into the shrub, but it's so much fun. I'm not super stoked that I'm going to be pulling up to Herald Bight in the dark again. So as you guys know, I don't like pulling up to campsites in the dark, especially because it seems rude to people, or to me anyway, to be pulling up there, scrounging around, looking for a campsite while everyone's set up and chilling out and sort of enjoying dinner or enjoying their peace and quiet. Then you come scrambling past without really knowing what you're doing. But we don't really have a choice in this situation, so we'll keep getting on through. We'll get there in a second. Oh, she's already looking. <laughs> Oh man, I wish I was filming some of this track coming in, eh? I've just come to the fork in the road. We're going that way. Yeah, pitch black, so there's no point in me rushing anymore because it doesn't matter how much I rush, I'm not gonna get any light coming back from this. So there's a D-Max. We might as well keep on going through, take our time with it. I'm gonna double check I haven't lost any fishing rods out of me boat yet as well, which I better do that now. One, two, three. Four. So they're all still there, that's good. So let's keep going. I was so excited for this, let's go. We're right, coming into Herald Bight now. This is what it's like, she's pretty soft and boggy. Got my lights on. Now I actually know someone who's here to the left of the beach, he said. So what I'm doing now is driving straight down to where it tees off and I'm just gonna try work out Whereabouts I can set up camp because I've got a couple of lights over there, a couple of that side too. And where do I begin? <laughs> where do I begin on this one, eh? Okay, so Oh, it's so quiet here. As soon as I turn that car off and I just stop talking, then you can just hear the peace from them. That is so good. This is the kind of place, the Francois Perrin National Park, where you rock up and the moment you do kill your motor and you get out of the car, you just feel this instant sorrow relief. Like you just feel all the weight of the world come off your shoulders and it just feels like the most relaxing place you've ever been to. And I promise that to anybody who ever dares to visit this place, if you haven't already, it's just not a worry in the world here. Everyone's so happy. I've just driven down Herald Bay. I've come here and then headed further north up the beach. 
um, which I've never actually done before. So as you're coming up, turn left, going up the beach, looking for a workmate who's actually up here at the moment with, the, with his family and friends. But I think he's camped so far away that it's actually made a little bit hard for me to find him. I'm just gonna roll the swag out and pretty much cook myself a dinner. I'm not gonna do the awning or anything, leave the boat hooked up. So then tomorrow morning, all I have to do at first light is just roll the swag up, throw it in the boat, and then I'm gonna drive down to where you launch the boat, which is right as you drive into Herald Bight here. So I'm gonna do a solo beach launch, which is, I think my first time ever doing that. Should be pretty straightforward. I think I can get it done. High tide's gonna be about eight o'clock in the morning. So I'll get the boat in the water, walk it around to where I actually wanna set up camp, and then I'm gonna set the awning up and stuff, and then I'll get out for a birthday fish. So how good's that? I had to actually buy a brand new sleeping bag the other day too because my my girl dog Elmira decided that it'd be a good idea to shred my other one to pieces off the washing line. First time I'd ever washed it and she got to it, unfortunately. So it was a cool 220 bucks. D-Max is looking muddy as in there, set straight out into some clay. She's all opened up here. Everything in there still doing its job. Just hung the LED strip light there. Set my chair for the night. Swag there. Weber there. Boat. I think I'm gonna take it pretty easy. I did bring two big rump steaks, so I reckon one of the rumps is gonna be on the menu. Got heaps of potatoes. Keep it simple, keep it blokey. And then as I get set up better for camping tomorrow night and have the awning and everything out, then I'll start getting a little bit excited with the whole cooking and cleaning sort of thing. <laughs> but until then, I'm just gonna take it real, real easy because the last thing I'm gonna be doing is waking up tomorrow morning and wanting to move and I've got out a hundred dishes because I've tried to cook up some big fancy dish for dinner tonight. Oh, better watch those rocks there. So let's have a look now. Plenty of avocados, mushroom, eggs there, pizza cheese. So I think I'll get that out. Ouch. And I'll have a look for what else is underneath there. Some garlic and chili. Bacon, antipasto, butter, chorizo. There's the garlic and chili. I'd love to hear your opinions as well, because I've been, I've never been much of a red meat guy. Um, I've only sort of recently in the last like year or two put like steak in my diet once a week sort of thing. I'd more so do it just to mix it up rather than because I feel like it or, you know, crave it. But I've gone like the porterhouse, the scotch fillet. I'll never go off the bone T-bone or anything, but for some reason I just come back to the rump steak now. The rump for me, seems to taste better than any other steak there is, even though it's not as expensive as the others. So, quite interesting there. I'll find, I don't know, let me know if you guys prefer the rump over anything else or why that might be. But anyway, that's what we got cooking up tonight. On she goes, so we'll give that a minute to heat up. All right, so on the menu tonight, we've got a bit of garlic, chili paste, big rump steak. Three potatoes there that I'm just gonna slice up, fry, and then one red onion that I'm also gonna slice up into strips and then chuck that on the barbie too. So I'll start with the potato and we'll get that on. I'll flip these little uh, potato slices, I suppose you'll call them. You wouldn't really call them a chip now, would you? Get them flipped and then I'll get this steak on. Get the big rump going on the grill. All right. Just sear away. Perfect. Just 
grab all these off. After a big 11 hour day of driving today, that's the sort of blokey dinner I've cooked up for myself tonight. Just a rump steak, potato and red onion on top. Okay, so I just carried it over there and I was just showing you guys, but the camera died. So I'll play that little clip right now while I'm talking. I just decided because I could hear so much splashing around in the water and stuff, um, I put my head torch on and had a quick look in there. And I could see lots of eyes. So I was like, oh, there's some fish out there. And I chucked the gidgey into my hand, threw my waders on and walked out. I knew to about knee deep. And then uh, there's some fish swimming around. I actually thought it was a yellow fin whiting, like quite a long one, and I speared it with my gidgey from the top. And I was like, yeah, that's the first time I've ever speared something with the gidgey and it felt unreal. And I was like, yeah, I got a whiting, but then I realized it was a snook. Um, so I'll use that for bait tomorrow. That's going into the fish bag, but still pretty awesome. So what I'm actually gonna do is take the camera over into the water now with my Gigi and walk around and see if I can spear something else that's actually worthwhile eating and keeping. Even though I just said good night to you guys. I'm gonna wrap it up there for the filming tonight because I wanna start fresh tomorrow with the sun in the sky. If something happens over there that's worthwhile, then this part's gonna be in the episode and uh, we'll see how we go from there. Trust you, Wade, is very glad I packed these. And then here's the Gigi. So there's a blue swimmer crab there, straight off the bat. Leave him alone. Oh, there's a flatty. Ready to watch me get a flatty? Oh, did I miss that? Yeah. Wow, these things here are psycho too. I don't know what they are. They're like an urchin, but the moment you touch them, they just disappear into the dirt. They're crazy. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I missed that flatty. That was big. This crab here would actually be a keeper if I wanted to keep him. Ready? Get him to swim up, I'll show you. There you go. I could eat that guy, but he can continue on with his life for tonight. All right, this one here is definitely a whiting. 100 million percent that is a whiting there. Oh, he gunned it. I'm gonna be honest and say I don't know what type of fish that is there, but I reckon it could be game over for him tonight. Should I go in? going. He wants a piece. Oh. <laughs> Man, this is too much fun, eh? No, I haven't speared this, I only pinned it down, but just to show you guys. So there's a blue crab right there. If I wanted to, I could probably get a few of these because there's a few around that I've seen. And there's a snook there getting past. No shortage of them, but the blue crab Maybe tomorrow I'll see how I go fishing and stuff, but I might even come get some of these tomorrow night and then do a chili crab or something for a lunch one of these days while I'm out here. So I'll let this one go. But he's just giving up, bearing into the sand. See that barb there, my light? Almost stood on that. So I'll leave him alone too. Luckily, you can see the eyes on him. It's a teeny weeny little stingray right there. Little baby one. He'd only be about 20 centimeters big across the top. Right, I'm sure this one here is actually a whiting. Got him. There you go. Spear of whiting with a hand spear. Knew they were out here. So I'll keep him. He can go in the fish bag. 
Woohoo. Okay, so we're off. Ooh, that's my, oh. Bugger. I think it was empty anyway, just as well. So after dinner there, I just had a good little forage. I'd say a forage, walked around with my hand spear out in the water there. Uh, shot a snook first up, I mistook it for a yellowfin whiting. And then I realized there's about 10,000 snook out there following me around. And then I managed to find one yellowfin and shot that as well. So I got the yellowfin, but it was actually pretty fun just getting around out there in the shallows, having a look around at night. Um, probably three or four blue swimmer crabs that were keepers as well. But anyway, with that being said and done, uh, I mean at this time I'm actually going to relax now and get settled in. It's been a long day so I wouldn't mind getting a good night's sleep tonight and then just sort of going hard for the next couple of days. So I'll see you guys in the morning and then we'll get started for my whole birthday celebration. How you going buddy? What's your name? Mason. Mason, I'm Rowan. Nice to meet ya. Oh, first drop on some yellowfin whiting. Yeah boy. <laughs> <laughs> 